Hello and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you the unique editing function that's available only in DaVinci Resolve. That is the Ripple Overwrite Edit. Okay, so before we get to the Ripple Overwrite itself, let's break this down into what it actually means. Firstly, an overwrite edit is when you're editing one clip where another clip already is in the timeline. Anywhere the new clip touches the old clip, that part of the old clip is overwritten. This is the same if I'm dragging the clip into the timeline or using the overwrite overlay or the overwrite clip button. As we're using a nonlinear editing system, we don't really delete the footage, just overwrite the portion being used in the timeline. Which brings me to the next concept, rippling. Whenever you ripple the timeline, it means that you're doing something at one point in the timeline that will make the overall timeline longer or shorter. It might be that you're removing a shot at one point to make the overall timeline shorter, or adding a shot to make it longer. An example of the first is using the ripple delete function. Selecting this clip, for example, and choosing to ripple delete it, removes it from the timeline, but also closes the gap. And the timeline becomes that few seconds shorter. Similarly, if I wanted to add this clip and I drag it to the timeline, I can only really overwrite it over any existing clips, meaning the overall timeline duration doesn't change. However, if I insert it, the clip is added to the timeline and pushes all the other clips up after it, making the timeline longer. This differentiation between overwrite and rippling also extends into trimming. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that pun. Here, if I select the edit point of this clip, I can trim it into the next clip, making this clip longer by overwriting the same amount of content of the next clip, and the timeline stays the same overall length. But if I simply switch to trim edit mode, now when I trim this clip in the same way, you can see how the rest of the timeline is reacting. It's rippling to accommodate the new duration. Basically, there's a simple rule when it comes to rippling, and that is that all the clips after the edit that you're adjusting will be affected. So here, you can see I can trim this clip and it will affect all the clips that start on or after this same point. So the music clip isn't being affected. This is because by default, Resolve is ensuring everything remains in sync as much as possible for the rest of the timeline, provided the auto track selector control is enabled for those tracks. So if I turn this off for the first audio track, you can see that the clips on that track then aren't rippled and go out of sync. Right, so let's put these two things together for the ripple overwrite. And firstly, it's really important to realize that the ripple overwrite is a four point edit. This means it uses the duration of the clip that I mark in the source, as well as the duration in the timeline to make the edit. This means it's really easy to overwrite one clip in the timeline with another from the source even if they are different durations. Here's a scene from the film Too Much Life and is a dialogue scene between two of the main characters, Harper Hudson and Vice Principal Garrett. Okay, so to start with, I've got Garrett's camera already in the timeline, although obviously there are parts where I'll need to be able to intercut the other angle of the conversation. You killed the centennial palm tree. It was an accident. I didn't mean to kill the tree. Please call it by its name. It's the Centennial Palm Tree. So I've just added edits around the parts where Harper is speaking currently off camera. And I'll place the timeline playhead anywhere over where I want to see Harper. The clip in the source viewer is Harper's shot the other side of the conversation. I'll just mark the first line from Harper. 
You killed the centennial palm tree. It was an accident. I didn't mean to kill the tree. And I'll use the edit overlays to perform a ripple overwrite. But just before I let go of the mouse button, take a look at the overall timeline duration, which is 49 seconds and 12 frames. Did you see the duration of the timeline alter slightly? In fact, we can now see that the timeline is a few frames shorter, at only 48 seconds and 21 frames. This was because the clip I was overwriting into the timeline was slightly shorter than the clip I had originally in the timeline for that take. So the timeline rippled by the differences in the durations of the two clips. Let's play that part of the edit back. You killed the centennial palm tree. It was an accident. I didn't mean to kill the tree. Please call it by its name. It's the centennial palm tree. Almost perfect. And just to prove it's no fluke, let me place the timeline playhead over the next line from Harper. And I'll mark that part in the source using in and out points. Please call it by its name. It's the centennial palm tree. Can't you just call it a palm tree? And again, perform a ripple override. This time, the timeline ripples to the right as the new take is slightly longer than the original. So the timeline's overall duration has now increased to 49 seconds and 20 frames. Again, let's take a look at the edit. Please call it by its name. It's the centennial palm tree. Can't you just call it a palm tree? Of course, this is only helping me add the footage to the timeline quicker. I'll still need to go back and adjust the pacing of the dialogue to make sure that it's absolutely perfect. But getting to this point is that much more efficient with Ripple Overwrite. You can also use Ripple Overwrite with timeline in and out points too. It's the centennial palm tree. Even which marks a duration of just under five seconds for the line on this take. And the appropriate in and out points in the source. It's the centennial palm tree. Do they even live that long? Which just so happens to be six seconds exactly. And ripple overwrite. It's the centennial palm tree. Do they even live that long? It's not just about the tree. And if you're wondering, yes, there's a keyboard shortcut for this. You'll find it here in the edit menu. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please like and subscribe. And if you've been using Ripple Overwrite already, or maybe this video has taught you something new that you can use, then please let me know in the comments. And you can also use the Ripple Overwrite in the cut page too. You killed the centennial palm tree. It was an accident. It was an accident. I didn't mean to kill the tree. Where there's a dedicated button. You killed the centennial palm tree. It was an accident. I didn't mean to kill the tree. Please call it by its name. It's the centennial palm tree. <laughs>